Hello, it's Lee Cassidy. Normally, we've uh, done our, checked out our technical demons before we start, but uh, today we're having some some issues getting things going. So uh, I am started the stream early, and uh, while we uh, kick things off, I'll drop to uh, a background image while we just get things sorted with the technology side, and hopefully we'll do it in a second.
Well, we, we're trying to get uh, Natalie on, but we're having some technical issues at the moment. Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll get things sorted in a second, but uh, um, hopefully, <laughs> um, we're going to get connected. So, and Natalie, I'm not sure if you can hear me at your end, but I don't seem to have a camera or any audio from you at the moment. So, you need to um, select the um, cam and mic setting gear cog at the bottom and actually specify your um, audio and uh, and camera settings uh, we normally start this early but we've not been able to get in contact with natalie to get this test done in advance so uh, we're a bit challenged today with things so i'm not sure can you hear me natalie So I'm going to drop out the feed while I get this saw. It'll hopefully start in a few seconds. Right. Can you hear you? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me, though? Yes, I can. I don't know what happened there. My computer wasn't... Um... Playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah, we... allowed to accept, so I'm doing it from my phone. Yeah, I'm gonna say I, I was on about quarter two, and I was I was saying hello, hello, and I don't think you knew you were getting on doing some work. I think you were doing some letters. I and was things. literally in early, waiting to see. Yeah. I didn't hear anything from you, so I was a bit confused. Yeah, because I, I was talking away, but you couldn't see me, um, you know, talking or hear me. So uh, we we've got there in the end. So that's that's the main thing. So um, we've got a little banner I've, I created. Let me just uh, find where I put the banner. I'm going to put it somewhere. There we go. So we've got uh, a bit of your um, your. Yeah, we've got all my got... logos there. Well, we've got uh, your um, City of Birmingham Business Awards piece at no, the bottom. No, I need to get a Transition Stage Company logo, and that's the most oh. important. I sent it, all of them I, over to you. It's at the top left. Oh, okay. Transition Stage there. It's Never the mind, tea. it's in. Yeah, it is there, and you've got Amplifier at the top left as well. Good. So let's kick off then, because we're um, running a bit behind now. So tell us a little bit about your career so far, what you've been doing up to this point, and then tell us a little bit more about what you're doing at the moment. So, you know, take us back a few years and, and what's what's happened with your life. Oh, a few years. I'll take you a bit further than that. I started off as an actress uh, and a model, and then, um, to cut a long story short, I um made a film and decided to move to new york and study over there because the creative industries isn't as inclusive for people like me in the uk it's really every it's really behind compared to every other sector like and it's peculiar because you would think it's the opposite because it's a progressive kind of industry but actually it's light years behind other creative industries so a lot of people like myself a lot of people from regional backgrounds um we go to america you know, we go to America. So I went to America, studied there, one of the best universities in the world for what I do. And um, I moved into producing and I set up a production company. And then I moved to France and then I moved back to Birmingham. And, when, when I, and that's circa 2014. And I went, moved back to Birmingham, did a master's there. I thought, let me do a master's in acting and political theatre. And then... I realised there wasn't much in the West Midlands in regards to the creative sector. So, for instance, BB, yeah, for instance, um, we pay thirty-five percent of TV licensing fees in UK um, to the BBC. Yet, I forget if it's thirty-five percent. I'm not sure, but yet we don't really have much made in here, made here in. Birmingham and I just I was back at square one I was like do I stay in my, do I move back to the USA or do I stay in the UK and try and make it more inclusive for people like me and also invigorate the creative industries in the West Midlands so there's more opportunity and I just have don't have to keep moving to London and moving to the US and I thought you know what I'm going to stand on the battlefield and um, I launched Transition Stage Company in a Nat West incubator hub and then from that, I launched a script writing competition called Enter Stage Write, which where people submit a script for a fee, all, your, all the scripts go in a database so I can pass them on to producers and whoever, production companies. And the top five writers 
they get put into like a red carpeted gala event. And this is at a theater event. It's, and usually it's at the Hippodrome. We have like 250 people in the room, 300, 250 people in the room from all different backgrounds. So we celebrate a new writing, um, invigorating the creative industry. And also what I do, which is very different to other people in the creative industry, uh, in the West Midlands, I bring all the top commissioners from TV, um, TV and the world of stage and film to come and choose the best writer at this event. So that part of the company, which is the end stage writer, script writing gala, has really taken off and it's firmly planted a lot of script writers who would never have the opportunity to work in TV. It's life-changing. And the good thing is it's done in the West Midlands and we're using the West Midlands as a conduit. So that's what I do now. But to cut, but to bring all that together, I'm a trained actress, I'm a producer, I'm an event organizer, and I'm also a lecturer. I lecture at universities, creative entrepreneurism. Which universities do you do that at? Edge Hill University, and I will be at the Birmingham Film Screen School starting soon. Okay. And so Birmingham coming back City to University as well. At Birmingham City University. <laughs> Birmingham City as well. So if you come back to the Birmingham product media side, you know, we used to have quite a lot in Birmingham years ago because there was years Pebble ago. Mill, uh, there was the Central Studios, but all of those closed down and they moved either down to London or as BBC seems to have moved a lot of things up to Manchester, don't they? And you know, I think everything's moved around regionally. I think that's and we've lost all that media side of things in Birmingham. Yeah. We've so. lost the momentum, and I don't think people understand that actually um, having things created in the UK, well, created in the West Midlands, can really generate and invigorate the rest of the area, you know, devolution. Like, for instance, when Peaky Blinders came out, I don't know when that was, that was like in 2010, 2011, I was in the US then. And I didn't watch Peaky Blinders, I didn't know what it was. And I remember being in Brooklyn the night out, and everyone was saying, you must know the Peaky Blinders, you're from Birmingham. Yeah. You know, and that's what new writing and one TV show can do. Just that's just one show. And that has probably boosted tourism in Birmingham, interest in Birmingham, historical interest. And I don't think people really understand the power of new writing and diverse voices and people from different backgrounds. Stephen Knight, obviously, he's a superstar, he's a megastar, but he's not your standard run of the mill, typical um man he doesn't come back he doesn't come from a privileged background he comes from you know small heath i think it is you know yeah. he probably has working class roots um you know and his voice is distinctly different to everyone else most people's voices in the creative industry and you can see it, you know and i'm just thinking how many other people are like that that we can drag out in different parts of the world from different backgrounds to generate new voices new income into the area and just invigorate the creative industry and bring people together for the intrinsic value for the creative arts so how big is the creative industry that you know of in, in the West Midlands and around Birmingham? You know, the, the pe people may not know of, you know, even though we've not got these you know, production companies. How many people work in that creative industry? Is it quite large? Um, it, I don't know. Let's we're going to talk about. OK, let's we can let's break it down because the creative industry is quite broad, isn't it? So you've got yeah. the visual art, like film industry. And then you've got the TV broadcasting industry. And then you've got the gaming industry, which is the gaming industry, Leamington Spa. That's like the Hollywood of computers. That's the Hollywood of yeah. gaming, you know. Yeah. And then also you've got the theatre production side. And usually, let's take gaming out of it, because that's its own beast. Usually a lot of creators in the West Midlands bounce around these you know, that these three industries. So, I so they'll, they'll move between them doing the writing, <laughs> doing backstage type things like yeah. lighting, cinematography, all those kind of things. Plus then you've got the, the people who stand in front of the camera as well, you know, whether that's a drama or whether that's some kind of documentary or, or other area then. Yeah, it's getting better in the UK. There's more, I mean, not better in the UK, so it's getting better in Birmingham, West Midlands. More stuff is being made. We have Create Central here that are trying to, um, trying to t skill up people in the West Midlands so they can work in high-end TV because high-end TV is another beast. High-end TV is like the TV shows that you see on streaming platforms and Netflix that are really yeah. expensive to make, which are like movies within itself. Yeah. They bring a lot of revenue to the city or wherever it's being filmed. Um, 
So yeah, you can see the quality is very different now on a lot of these streaming platforms with the the TV series. As they're like you say, they are like small films, an hour long film, and in oh, a series of of six to eight episodes. Aren't and they? they're so expensive, and there's so much risk yeah. in making these films. You know, when the pandemic started. I'm only a small company, I'm a startup, but you know, only these high end TV shows could actually run because they have the insurance and a million dollar budget, you know, and they have, they can do all the COVID, you know, the, you, you know, if one person gets sick on your set, <laughs> yeah. that's like so much money lost. I think, um, who was it now? Mission Impossible have a lot of problems with their insurance yeah. company because they had to miss different shoots and, you know, if you're a small production company like me, or not even small, even medium, <laughs> it's just not worth it. But no. um, Birmingham's getting better um, with more things being made in the area. But now, because it's taken so long, there's so many people like me who have just gone to London or left the UK. In You know, we can't wait around forever. So now there's a black hole of um, people that are not qualified so we've got Create Central, which is doing a great job bringing that kind of training in. But then it's always allocated to young people from 18 to 24. And then there's people like me who probably you look young and sound young, but, you know, we're like in our late 30s. And there's people like me that have had kids and just missed a chance because their opportunities were there. And I just really would love to find that talent in them areas. Well. And I think that's we have a lot of ageism in the creative industries. We talk about yeah. race and you know, and gender and, um, you know, ethnicity and class, but there's so much ageism. And, you know, I think Steve and I actually did something for the film market where he was looking for creators that are 50 plus and over. And I think that's a wonderful thing because... I'm, I fit in that bracket quite well. <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've, I've not been affected by ages of myself personally, but I can understand, especially in the media industry, it can be quite a difficult thing. And and you hear of things. I think the BBC had some issues with a number of programmes where they were seen to be pushing out the older presenters for younger blood to come in. So, you know, you can see that issue. And I think they were taken to court, weren't they, over it as well? So there's been some some incidents of it in, in the yeah. mainstream, hasn't there? Yeah, I think, I think actually we need to actually make the different that make a difference because i think a lot of what um also as well i think a lot of what um the tv stations are doing they are pushing some older presentate presenters or presenters or people that probably don't have the same ideas of the next of you know the younger generation out you know for instance what yeah. was that guy out of um fifth was it the car driving the person that drives his car it does three of them What's it called? Fifth Gear? Is that what it is? Yeah, there's uh, the gear. Fifth Gear. Top Gear was the one on BBC, and the Fifth fifth Gear was on, uh, I think, Channel 5 or Channel 4. Yeah, well, Top other. Gear, for instance, that guy is yeah. very charismatic, but he just had very <laughs> archaic colonial views yeah. that just didn't match. You know, and people kind of, like, mix people like that being pushed out with age, and we have to really make a difference, make a... Yeah. You know, yeah. ageism is very different to very an individual different. personality and, and yeah. the challenges those personalities can bring. Yes. Be, be but, trying to be polite. <laughs> yeah. But um, the, the, I think the reason why some, you know, I don't know the full details, but I think the reason why some older present presenters or people are being pushed out, it's not because they're older sometimes, it's because the broadcasting stations are, are, are dying. They're competing with Netflix, TikTok. And the thing is, they need yeah. to find, OK, it's great we've got this audience now, but what's going to happen in the next 20 years, 15 years? So they're really trying to find presenters, Gen Z, who, re who reach to, who talk to these new audiences. Because in 20 years, you know, we've got Netflix, Disney, TikTok. Actually, TikTok and YouTube are the biggest rivals to yeah. Disney and Netflix, and who's who, and who goes on TikTok and YouTube? Young people, yeah. they're not interested in um, broadcast TV as much as they used to anymore. So, a lot of um, broadcasting people are like, you know, they're trying to survive. So they're actually, they're not, they're actually picking um, people off YouTube who've got an audience to come and come in and do certain things. As if it's a good idea because it's also changing the way we choose talent. You know, I'm a trained actress. A trained actress. I went to one of the best drama schools in, in the UK, Birmingham Royal Conservatoire. But, you know, now if you've got XY TikTok followers, you know, you could probably get a contract on a massive streaming platform. 
And it's, yeah. you know, and who wants to, you know, when people are thinking, should I go and get an education? Should I study and be the best? Because if I've got lots of followers and I've got a voice, even whether it's good or not good or, mis or say misinformed things, a lot of people are trying to jump onto these influences. So the whole creative industry is changing. You know, it's more about the writing now. Like, you know, because if you think about all these streaming platforms like Disney, Netflix, or even YouTube, whatever, they want people to be addicted so they yeah. need really good writers. And I think that's one of the reasons why I, within my company, started focusing on the script writing IP. Because well, people... If, if you look back, people weren't talking about binge watching things back in the days before you know, streaming TV. When it was you know, st standard live broadcast TV on, on the main channels and also some of the Sky channels, you know, you'd have to wait a week to watch the next one, the next one. And yeah, it's linear. People didn't talk about um, you know, binge watching and creating that addiction that you get nowadays. It's really started to change as these streaming platforms have come about. And, it, and it's quite strange if you think about where Netflix comes from. From. It was a over-the-post rental DVD business originally, oh. wasn't it? So quite different, but they could see that you know people were going away from that, and they needed to be a different you know, way of doing things. And in fact, Amazon you know video comes from a similar background of of that you know selling DVDs, but then changing the way that they deliver that media, you know, so that people can watch it you know directly without having to physically get their hands on that disc or prior to that vcr i remember the vcr days and and things but uh you know it's has changed the industry dramatically um do you think it's made things more difficult as well for people in the creative industry this these streaming platforms it made it more difficult uh, to to be paid um, um has it changed it the amount people get paid yeah has yeah it, affected it depends things? so it depends actually it depends who you are so for instance now there's actually a really interesting article on squid games um squid games so if you're a writer or you know they don't want you to have royalties they want to take all of it and give you fractions of your payment through for i don't know if this is right but it could be maybe two three years not what the negotiation is but say if i'm a writer i have this amazing script about birmingham netflix love it they put it through their computer AI algorithm and they work out whether it's going to be a bestseller or not bestseller, um, a binge watching yeah. um, TV program because they've got all the information of what people watch. They've got hundreds and hundreds of data, millions and millions of data of who watches and what's interesting, and what people like. So they look at the script and then they'll work out how much they want to give you from that information, yeah. which no one knows it's theirs. That's where they're like their, their gold mine. And then they say to you, no, you can't have royalties. We own the whole rights of it and we'll pay you in a yearly manner. So some writers are saying, this doesn't work for me. So for instance, Michaela Cole was, Michaela Cole turned down a million pound dollar contract for Netflix and got rid of her agents and said, look, this is my baby. I want royalties. I, you know, I have no kids. I have no house. When I'm writing a script, it's like me birthing a child into the world. Yeah. I want to have some part of my ownership. And this was kind of like a record landmark, landmark case because H, I think, I don't know if it could be HBO, but BBC, I think they partnered with HBO and they said, you, or BBC says, BBC said, you can, we'll pay you and you can have um, creative, creative um, direction of the script. And it's one of those Emmys, you know, it's whether you want to take that gamble. <laughs> you yeah. know, for instance, if yeah. Netflix came to me, I've got a few um, projects in development, you know, within my company there's a few projects i probably wouldn't want to do that but some other projects like say a documentary i'm developing at the moment i wouldn't mind sending it to netflix and getting it out there because you've got to work out how many people are going to see your work yes you yeah. know or what do you want ownership it's like king mentality or money mentality and then there's another um interesting thing that happened with the squid games where the squid game script which is really popular at the moment i haven't watched it but apparently the man said the ma it made Netflix. I don't know. They said it made Netflix so much money, so much more subscribers, trending so much that it literally that bit of IP boosted their platform, their shares. And someone said to the writer, "How do you feel about that? You know, should you should you have gone for a performance based buyout? <laughs> but Netflix don't do that. So for writers, I don't know. I think the game posts get goalposts are changing a lot for creators. Yeah. But and if you also, look at it. 
I say if he'd never had anything produced, you know, he wouldn't have had a name to start with. So it's hard. It's it's you know what comes first, the chicken or the egg, in a lot of cases. So so to be able to you know get a decent, I mean, it's like actors and actresses or act, uh, actors because we're all they're all actors now, aren't they? We, we've got rid of this uh, um, feminine or, or male piece. But if you look at most of those, they they step up. In, in increments with income, don't they, based on, you know, their experience and the kind of things they've done before and the, and the response they've had to particular programmes or, or films they've done. And they're stepping up their game as they go along, but but also the particular films or, or TV programmes, again, command more more royalties, or, you know, if it's done that way, like you can see. Well, American, look at Game of Thrones. It generates more money, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but look at Game of Thrones, the actors there. They were virtually unknown. Nina Gold, yeah. who's a casting director, she's like the mark, like she's like the holder grail of casting directors. Nina Gold is. She found all these actors out of, um, you know, picked Obscurity. them out from there. <laughs> yeah, and then there was in Game of Thrones, and then they're just literally overnight superstars, and then they're like charging so much money for each episode because they are the episode, you know. Yeah. And you know they're, they're you know there's sometimes some TV shows. I think there was a TV show actually with um, I think the Rolling Stones was a sponsor and Martin Scorsese was a sponsor. I, f- I think it was called Vinyl and it was on Sky. It was absolutely amazing, but it only had one season because it was so expensive to hire the yeah. talent. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you know that the show can be. Um, a victim of his own success but also going back to the question you said earlier on regarding is it difficult for creatives it depends really you know and I think it comes down we're in the world we're in the world of influencer and clout and who are you and attention currency and if you're an actor and you know you're just a trained actor like you went to the best drama school you know in the olden days if you went to Rada, Lambda, Juilliard you're just in but now you know, yeah, that's like your CV, wasn't it? You yeah. Know, if, if you've been to those places, you were, you would get an opportunity to go in for a, to to read for something. But it, yeah, but it's kind of like changed now a little bit. You know, you it's how many social media followers you have. People say it's not, but it is yeah. because everything's so noisy now. And if you want to be heard, you want press, you want PR, you need to ride in that wave. So I'd say it's easy. If, say if you're not a trained actor and you just look great and you've got good you can act somewhat you can be directed and you've got lots of social media followers you're probably going to be chosen over the actor who's a bit better than you who went to a better school in some cases and i think there was an interesting case um regarding um uh, his name sophie turner the one from yes uh, yeah. game of thrones oh, right. yeah think she was chosen over another actress because she had more followers and she admitted and said the other actor was probably stronger than her but because I had millions of followers they went with me and you know I look back at that I I'm somewhere on the fence because I am a trained actress but I don't know if I've got if I've got an independent film and I know I've got an actor who's really really hungry he's okay he's an actor and he's really good in social media he's going to promote himself I don't know maybe I might choose the actor because it kills two birds with one stone you know you've got the press the yeah, PR. you've got the promotional aspects built in haven't you you know yeah. through the the relationship that 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 particular actor has with their social media followers yeah so it's you know self promotion isn't it for for them yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I can see it that way. You can say it is challenging, isn't it? You know, with everything. So, how you're, you're changing it with, um, you know, your Enter Stage Right, and that's an event you do. Is it once a year? Yeah. Um, so Enter Stage Right is one event. Um, yeah. What we do once a year, and I'm doing a second version called Amplified, which yeah. is the same form as Enter Stage Right. So think of it like an X Factor for writers. So the reason why we did Amplified this year because of George Floyd, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. and um, the 20, 2020 was quite a dark year, you know, with racial inequality coming to the forefront. And when I wanted to see myself reflected in TV or any films, or anyone who looked like me who's black and brown, I'd always see films based around race or things that are quite dark. And I just thought, why can't, Why is there not many com- British, there's lots of black African-American and Asian c- comedians in the USA, but why are there no comedic shows, writers with lightness and joy? Why is everything about race? Which is important stories to tell, but why is it? Why are yeah. stories about race and 
inequality from people like me only shown on TV. You know, there's so much more to us. You know, we've got, you know, look in the noughties. We have the, we had the renaissance of goodness gracious me and all these many things. They were so much fun. Everyone liked it. It was universal, universal comedy for all people. And I just thought I need yeah. to bring that back. I need to bring more joy and more comedy from voices, from black and brown voices and ethnic minority voices. So I launched that writing competition simultaneously with Enter Stage Right. And I had support of UK TV and BBC. And um, it's going really, really well. I've got judges from all over the world, Emmy Award judges. We've got Sarah Santi on board and Final Draft, which is the industry standard script writing format, you know, media um, software that we writers and people use. And I, my aspiration is to actually turn this, turn a script writing competition into a TV format, Factor Entertainment show. So for instance, you have X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, they're singing TV shows. I would love to do a script writing or playwriting version. So this year, we couldn't do a big event. Well, 2020, we couldn't do a big event. You know, 2021 early, because I was really worried about the pandemic and I just didn't want to do a massive event and worry about it being canceled. So I said, actually, this has been a gift to me, this pandemic. I'm going to film them in a somewhat theatre hybrid with the Hippodrome into a factory entertainment show. So yeah. this year, we have the two shows, run two events, competitions, running sign, like simultaneously, and then they're going to finish... 2020 or 2021? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2021 in January. 20, Sorry, 20, 2022 then. 2022, January. yes, that's yeah, right. We're in 2021 at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Back to the future. No, um... I know. <laughs> without a delorean so, yeah <laughs> so um in january we're going to be doing a screening of the script writing competitions in january to launch 2021 yeah. finalist winners they'll win a thousand pounds and meet and greet to the industry and maybe their scripts made into a film and then next year we'll do the normal theatrical performance show of the event that we yeah. normally do because if anything goes wrong if boris johnson turns around and says we can have a lockdown. I've already got these films, and I can put them online. Yeah. I need to keep. I need to keep momentum up, and I need to keep going with what I do. Yeah, and so we we don't know what the future is going to bring you. I think a lot of people have, have thought things were going to improve much quicker than they have. So I think we've just got to hope for the best, really, and uh, and see what happens. And I think it's affected so many different people in different ways. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been personally affected because my mother died of COVID, but also my father died because he couldn't get cancer treatment because of the covid situation so they both died five weeks apart back uh, early this mm -hmm. year so you know things like that happen uh, and i think a lot of people you know in the country have been affected in some way by it through you know their, their jobs you know i think a lot of people have lost work you know because we we've been challenged as well with what we do in our, our technical business because people haven't been in the office to be able to run projects so we couldn't provide them infrastructure and services to be able to deliver because they didn't have the people in because they'd laid so many people off uh, you know for things and also they got so many pe other people you know struggling uh, as well so you know it's been a bit of a challenge for people I, I seem to have lost your camera feed at the moment oh you're turning around there you Talk go you've that. appeared yeah <laughs> i think it's when you turn phones around the camera goes off and restarts again yeah it turned off i wanted to turn better. So I'm sorry about that. That's really awkward. No, no worries. I wanted to no turn worries. my camera around so I can hear you a bit more. I'm really sorry about your uh, your parents. And no, no. So you think, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's been a lot. Of, a lot of people have been more impacted than me. But uh, you know, it just makes you think a little bit about you know other people's lives and how they've been affected by everything that's going on at the moment. And and it's not just like you know I can't go to the the pub. I can't go for a meal or things that we had. And a lot of people seem to think that was the end of the world. But actually, losing you know jobs, uh, being limited in what you can earn and and look after your family, but also losing family is a, another big factor. I think we've had a big step change. I think it was yesterday the US opened up so people can now travel to and from the US. So that's a big change over the last 18 months, isn't it? Because that's I think that came into effect about March. Um, it was between March and June um, over a year ago. So that's a big change, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually. And it's really exciting because usually before the pandemic, I'd spend at least two months a year in the USA, you know, working not working but networking with people yeah um you know i lived there for four years so it's 
it's I can't wait to get back over there. I'll probably go there ne- well mid mid next year. But um New York's actually devastated apparently yeah. from the pandemic. And if you think about it, the world is changing so quick. It's everything's evolving so quickly. You just have to really be able to pivot. So for instance, with end stage run amplify the script writer competition, you should do a big event galas. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna film it because you just don't know. You've got to be risk yeah. averse. But going back to New York, if you think about it, New York is so expensive to live and it's all commercial properties, you know, Wall Street, you know, a lot of these people are working from home now. They're moving out of the city. If the, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. If we don't have these commercial places, you know, full, the whole infrastructure of New York can collapse because New York is all commercial properties. That's what that's what keeps it alive. You know, that's what keeps the restaurants alive. So I'd be, it'd be interesting to see how the world changes after the pandemic. Are we going to go back to how we are, how we were before? You know, things, I don't even think we will. Sorry. I don't think we will. I, th- I think we'll have a hybrid of what it was like before and what it is now. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people who've worked from home for a while now and they, they actually enjoy working from home. So I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to stay working from home because it works for them because they can actually balance it around children and other things and, and, and animals. You know, the only people have got animals now at home because they've been working at home and they didn't have an opportunity to have a dog or a cat before, you know, because they were always working. But because they've been working at home, they've now got a pet and now they won't want to go back to the office because they don't want to leave, uh, you know, um, um, mittens or uh, or patch the dog at home on their own now <laughs> that's so, so true that's no yeah. I no I agree and also in regards to my industry n- n- less people go to the cinema now yeah. so that's really changed the way we distribute films and taken power from different people in the industry so from producers so you know everything's changing and you, we just don't know what's going to happen i feel like at the moment we're all just riding the wave surfing the wave to see what's going to happen next and i think the most successful people will be the ones who can pivot quickly and feel it feel it out and just make sure they're not blindsided by lots of different changes happening in their industry yeah well, we, we spoke about some of the streaming platforms but there are lots of new ones starting up isn't there hulu's been around for a while they focus mainly on you know no higher i think it is isn't it the one that focuses on reality programs uh, you've got um also apple have you know entered in about was it a year a year and a half ago they started with apple tv plus and they're doing a lot of work there, there's some big changes with sky because sky are now doing this majority streaming platform that's been sold sky glass where it's actually all built into a TV, but there's no dish on the wall anymore. That's you know, so that changes changing. things. Yeah, and, and it's they reckon it's also going to change people's behavior in, in the way that they, they consume um, you know, content because they're, they're looking at it in a different way because they're presenting it differently. It's not now, um, you know, past Sky was all about you look down your, your listings, your TV guide and what was on, you either watched it live or you recorded it and then you go back to it. This is going to change that completely because it's all now, what do you want to watch? When do you want to watch it? And you can just watch anything, anytime. So you know, it's taking that timeline piece away. So again, it's changing a lot of people's views and how they're actually going to uh, consume media. So it's giving us a lot of choice, but again, it's affecting the creative industry in a big way because it's changing the way that you get paid. It's changing the way that things are being created as well. Yeah. Because if a lot of people are working from home as well, that changes the the dynamics. You know, people aren't in a a large studio or in a post-production facility going through, you know, the, the, the image and the audio cleansing things like they did before. They're actually doing it from home. Yeah. that's going to change things dramatically as well yeah, yeah we're in post-production now and it's just we're just working from zoom and whatsapp we're like she just sends me a clip through dropbox and says what do you think about this and i'm like okay you know, obviously there's probably um if it, if it was a big million pound budget film it'd be a lot bit different but actually even then people are working from home the dynamic is changing and um, i'm not sure if it's a positive i don't know if it's positive or negative it's just how you make the use to make the most of it isn't it yeah, I think that's the thing. I don't always look at things as positive or negative. Just look at the opportunity that uh, it brings. You know, think of it as a challenge. I think I that's think the best way to approach, is it? No, totally, Lee. I totally agree. We've literally just pivoted into, we've decided with our production company that we're mainly going to focus on TV and 
yeah. development because that's where the industry is going you know yeah. ip like that so it's an exciting time and it's really made me level up and level up level up my, the way i work with different people and also my leadership skills as well okay well i've taken up quite a lot of your time i know we had some technical dif difficulties at the beginning are there any key things you want to uh, tell people about any announcements to make um i know you you, you briefly spoke about the two uh, events you're running um at the uh, beginning of next next year in january but do you want to tell people a little bit more about some of the things to, to look forward to in the future and we can also maybe put some links into the um you know the recording feeds afterwards yes. on your, youtube and also in linkedin so people can go and have a look and see what's happening okay so we have our script writing events in january they're gala events anyone can go it's a great glamorous event to be in january it'll be in birmingham we'll keep you posted so follow the website follow our social media and also if you're a writer script writer and you want the opportunity you should submit to our competitions enter stage right and amplify it if you're from an ethnic minority comedy um, ethnic minority background and want to do comedy, submit to our scriptwriting competitions, competitions that have to be 10 minutes long. And also, if you're a company who wants content made and you have your own content and you want it produced and packaged, and you also want training in performing in front of a camera, my company will be offering this service in January as I'm a trained actress so I can help present and help people speak into the camera. And also, if you have content, I can produce this and film it for you. So these are three things that you should watch out for. My event, script writing gala, and if you're a script writer, submit to the competitions, find out the date is. And then the third thing is, if you have content and you want to package, review speaking, or you just want to get filmed and produced, come to me, come to Transition Stage Company. Okay. Do you have actually a production facility? Have you a studio or do you rent facilities when they're required? We rent facilities when they're required. It doesn't make sense hiring a studio yeah. at this, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a cost, time. isn't it? I did yeah. have a studio. I did have a studio before the pandemic, but I gave it because there was no point. But yeah. it's best to go. We are a project by project production company, and most companies are like that now. So yeah. that's how we work. Well, thank you very much for your time today. And so I'll, we'll get some content posted onto the LinkedIn um, uh, post and also onto the YouTube. I'll also get you a copies of the video so we can try and promote it. Um, none of this is ever edited. We just do it live as it is. So, you know, people take it warts and all, especially at the beginning when we had our technical issues. But we got there in the end. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. That was really uh, nice to uh, to speak to you again and learn a bit more about what you're doing. Thank you, Lee, for the opportunity and sorry for the technical issues. <laughs> no, no worries. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, bye.